everyone and welcome to the School of Business Economics and Law at the University of Gothenburg and this lunch webinar. I'm Marie Örninge. I work as event manager at the school uh, and we have quite a lot of events here and we have research within many different fields and some will be presented on open online events like this one and you are always welcome to join. If you follow us on Facebook, you check our web uh, or LinkedIn, you will find invitations. Today, uh, I have the privilege to welcome Rick Middel. You can, there is Rick, uh, who is assistant professor at the Unit for Innovation and Entrepreneurship at the Department of Economy and Society at the school. And Rick's research is focused on business model innovations and Rick is responsible uh, for the Master of Science program in knowledge-based entrepreneurship. And today uh, Rick will explain for us why do sustainable business models fail. Rick will talk about 40 minutes uh, uh, and after the presentation there will be time for questions from you. So please post questions in the chat function uh, but make it as short and clear as possible to make it easier for us uh, and Rick will answer as many questions as he can. So welcome Rick, the screen is yours. All right, thank you very much Marie and uh, welcome everyone to this uh, launch webinar on why do sustainable business models feel. It's a great pleasure to be here with you today uh, just before Christmas uh, to talk about this slightly provocative topic around, you know, why do sustainable business models feel? I know it's a provocative question, but I, I will come back to that and I'll explain to you why I think it's important to kind of talk about the failures as well. So um, uh, uh, you already heard a little bit who I am, but um, I just want to be able to kind of introduce myself a little bit more specifically so that you know who you actually been uh, looking at and listening to uh, as such. So my name is Rick Middle, as Marie said, Assistant Professor for the Unit of Innovation and Entrepreneurship, where uh, research education uh, around these two fascinating topics of innovation and entrepreneurship are kind of like clustered. Uh, I originally come from the Netherlands. I moved uh, to Sweden in 2009 um, and I've been here now oh, uh, more than uh, 10 years. So in many different ways, more Swedish than Dutch, but uh, that's a little bit more about my background. Uh, I have a PhD in industrial engineering and management, and from there through research, education, kind of like moved from more engineering, uh, operations management into the world of innovation and entrepreneurship. So, uh, so what I do in my capacity over here, I'm of course a teacher. Uh, so I teach in our two master programs that we have, the innovation management program, as well as the entrepreneurship uh, program on different courses related to innovation management, entrepreneurship, but also business modeling. And that's a little bit where my biggest interest uh, is uh, at the moment when it comes to research. So not to kind of purely think about innovation as how can we innovate our products? How can we innovate our processes? How can we innovate the way we kind of like deliver our processes as such, but how can we actually capture, create and and deliver value in, in different kinds of ways. Uh, so business models uh, provide the opportunity to uh, well increase the, uh, oh, the amount of innovations that are actually possible to kind of work with. Because you can sell, you can produce products in different kinds of ways and they will have different kinds of outcomes. So it depends on the, the business model. And that kind of like spurred my interest in moving into a skill that we call sustainability as well. I'm, I'm a proud member of, let's say, the sustainability board here at, uh, at Hamburg the School of Business, Economics and Law. So I'm, I'm a great advocate of sustainability. Um, so with that said, the title might be a little bit uh, strange, uh, provocative. So if you're kind of like advocating sustainability so much, why do you want to talk about a failure? What is, you know, why is it interesting to look at the failures? Isn't it more important to talk about the successes, about what is actually the impact of sustainability? Absolutely, you're absolutely right. But I think it's also important that we actually look at the cases where we don't, because, uh, where we don't succeed. Reason for that is because I think if we look at popular uh, uh, news items, if we look at academic research, if we look at what we see in kind of the news, we are very often see the success stories. And of course, then sustainability is linked to uh, doing good for society, doing good for the environment, 
from an organizational perspective, if we manage it well, it can lead to, you know, being more attractive as an employer. It could lead to kind of like efficiency, be more effective. So there's different kind of reasons why, of course, it's important to look at the success stories. But as we all know, or hopefully we all know, is that when it comes to innovation, when it comes to business modeling, but also when it comes to integrating sustainability in the way we capture, the way we create, and the way we uh, uh, deliver value, uh, not everything is kind of like working. Um, so success in that particular kind of way, it's a great motivator, but it's also a lousy learner, as we kind of like know. Um, because what we do well today might not be the things that we should be doing for tomorrow. So, and that's why we have to look a little bit more at the cases. Okay, why do we actually feel in order to be able to learn from this, in order to kind of really assess why do certain innovations, why do certain business models, why do certain sustainability initiatives are not really kind of working out. So what I want to present to you today is not so much, let's say, uh, um, efforts or let's say results of a clear research that I've done, but it's more as part of, let's say, an idea that I've been working with uh, for trying to get up a certain research agenda or trying to get some kind of research program uh, uh, up and running. And for there, I would like also to reach out to all of you to kind of see what your interest is in the topic and maybe hopefully we can do something together uh, in the future. Because if this is kind of like a topic that it interests you as well, I hope that we could kind of like, you know, interact not only as part of this particular kind of session, but also afterwards to kind of see, well, you know, maybe it's good to look at these kind of failures. Maybe it's good to kind of like see what companies should potentially do differently uh, or how can they even be become more effective in kind of like pushing sustainable business models through their organization. So I'm reaching out a little bit on out to you as well, because I think that's also part of of let's say what we need to do as a, as a university, not only to talk about the academic research and the high quality academic research that we of course do here at the Handelshurst Club, but also to kind of like start with, you know, developing research ideas and uh, um, research agendas. So this is a little bit what I tried to hope to, to give to you today. Some of my um, ideas based upon my research that I've done on business modeling, but trying to connect it more towards sustainability kind of agenda. Uh, and I hope that we can have a little bit of a discussion afterwards as well. So that's enough about me. Um, so what I wanna do for today is, you know, talk about these two keywords, um, the S word and the F word. Uh, and I will come back to those as well. And as I said, um, I'm a great advocate of sustainability, part of the board. So I really kind of like, applaud let's say every kind of social sustainability initiative that organizations can go through uh, and i hope of course that many of these kind of sustainability initiatives can like succeed but at the other hand i think we also have to be realistic then when within an organizational firm uh, a lot of these kind of ideas will not make it to let's say become implemented in the marketplace and as what we know from innovations it's not only about coming up with something new but there needs to be this reduction to practice there needs to be some kind of implementation in the marketplace. So with that said, we know that many of these ideas that we kind of come up about, you know, thinking about sustainability is actually not really kind of like working out. Um, there's some very interesting research that are done by Professor Gassmann in, in this particular area. And he looked at 1919 different ideas that people within different kinds of organizations came up with. Out of these 1919 ideas, only 12 of them actually became a success. So we know that some were in the process of coming up with an idea towards sustainability, towards innovation. We will be losing a lot of these great ideas along the way for, for different kinds of reasons. Uh, so a lot of these ideas will actually fail. So why is this happening? Why is this, why? Uh, so I'm going, I wanna share with you some of these ideas from both innovation management, from business model innovation and, and sustainability for that kind of matter of what are the typical reasons why these kind of sustainable business models ideas actually do feel uh, in order to be able to learn from it um, and to really kind of see what can we do differently how can we twist how can we tweak how can we explore how can we do things uh, in a different kind of way to make it actually a success because that's the most important uh, thing for when it comes to failures we need to learn from it so 
the, the, two S, the, the two words, the S word and F word will be part of, let's say, my, my presentation that I would like to focus on. So what I would like to do here now is kind of start here uh, and uh, recommend this particular kind of article to you, because I think it's a very interesting article that talks about the path towards sustainability, how organizations are working uh, with, you know, uh, with sustainability and how they could use it as a driver for their innovation. Because I think that's an important part of, let's say, what organizations need to do. How can or how should uh, sustainability come in, in in terms of all the innovation work that an organization is actually doing? Uh, this particular model that's been uh, developed by Nidamula um, et al. Uh, kind of talks about five different phases. It is not the, uh, the, the, so that the highest phase is the ultimate uh, truth. That's what you know, all companies should aim for. Depending on the industry, depending on the, uh, the company, depending on, let's say, the marketplace, um, companies can choose to kind of like innovate in different kinds of phases. So on the lowest level, we see you know, where sustainability can be seen as uh, our compliance, compliance as an opportunity with new regulations coming in, with new kind of um, rules coming in, this might create opportunities for innovations towards products, towards new kind of technologies, green technologies, and so forth. Um, the next phase that the article kind of discusses is how can we actually make our value chains more sustainable? And this has been a lot of the focus uh, uh, in many organizations, in many kind of industries, and there's been a lot of research on this particular kind of uh, part. So how can we increase the, the sustainability aspects as part of our overall value chain as an organization, not only being responsible anymore for what happens inside the organization, but also more and more having to take responsibility for what's happening in the supply chain, for example. There are many industries that has been working a lot with this. Um, uh, for example, if you take the clothing industry, the fashion industry, which of course has been in the news uh, as such, having and needing to take their responsibility in this particular kind of uh, part. So, but when you think about sustainability, the value chain, uh, the supply chain provides another kind of uh, possibility. Um, the other part is, or the next phase is, will be how can we design sustainable products? How can we design sustainable services? Um, for example, a lot of this happening, for example, nowadays within packaging. How can we reuse, how can we, you know, uh, old packaging and start uh, using it for uh, new packages as such. Great initiatives. A lot of things are kind of uh, moving into that kind of uh, direction on how to create and develop more sustainable uh, products and, uh, and how to think about this whole cradle to grave kind of uh, concept. Um, a lot of really interesting kind of examples. Um, the next phase, uh, as the article describes, it talks about this this business models. And that's a little bit what I would like to do later on in this particular uh, lecture uh, or this uh, seminar as well to talk a little bit about the business models. So how can we create business models that on the one hand provide and create value for an organization but at the same time create value for the society, for the social aspects? And how do we balance this? Uh, I will provide you with an example from Michelin, but there's other um, a great examples, for example, interface, interface using garments to develop uh, new kind of um, uh, clothing, but they're actually buying up now old fishing nets uh, as well. Fishing nets being a huge, having a huge impact on the whole ecosystem at the, in the oceans. Um, fishes are being uh, caught up. Um, so they're actually buying up old fishing nets and they're actually producing new kind of garments around this. So they have, are able to develop a business model that is kind of both viable for them, uh, feasible to do, as well as it addresses different kind of uh, uh, desirability kind of aspects in terms of uh, the social uh, impact, the societal impact uh, as such. And then the last part is what we referred back to as what we call this new uh, practice kind of uh, platforms, more specifically focused and a lot triggered by digitalization. For example, a lot of things are happening now on the energy efficiency of, of buildings uh, and trying to create complete different kind of uh, platforms. So there also we see that, for example, digitalization, sustainability, innovation are going hand in hand and developing new opportunities for, uh, for organizations. Um, 
But just to kind of like challenge this a little bit, kind of like, you know, when we talk about the S words in more in terms of businesses, we very often refer back to sustainability. Um, and this is just a source that I found from Athens, which is a very interesting article around, article around sustainability and how can you develop business model for, uh, for sustainability as such. And when they talk about sustainability and sustainable value, they basically refer back to the triple helix that all of we, you are so familiar with uh, as such. So one part of this is what we call sustainability. How can companies work with sustainability? How can they actually, uh, or how do they need to think about sustainability? But the other part of the S word is what we call sustainable competitive advantages. Now we're going back to uh, Porter and all the, uh, the famous management gurus. How can we, as companies, can create sustainable competitive advantage? When we talk from with innovation management, uh, we very often talk about using innovation as a trigger, not only to stay in business for today, but also to keep in business for tomorrow. So, so, so sustainability uh, becomes an important part. But how do you bring these actually together? Uh, and the cross doesn't mean that you should not. Uh, so, uh, but the cross basically means this is actually more difficult to do than um, what people sometimes think, or what sometimes also kind of like research kind of shows. Again, uh, we within our academic uh, uh, institutions, we try to focus a lot of on these positive cases as a way to uh, tell like, oh, this is important, uh, and this is what is actually possible, but it's actually more difficult to do. And that's a little bit what I want to kind of like to, to focus on uh, with you for today. How can we bring sustainability and sustainable competitive advantage together? And what is actually sometimes holding back organizations from doing that? Because if we can take away these barriers, if we can take away these kind of challenges, we will be able to kind of like push more uh, sustainable business models out in the, um, in the marketplace, uh, in society. And I think that's all what we really want. And that's all we really kind of like need uh, giving, let's say, the, the difficult times that we're kind of like living in uh, today. So just to give you a little bit of a, an idea around, let's say, what, what do I refer back to as sustainable business models? What do we actually really kind of like talk about? So when these are just a, oh, three definitions of kind of like, you know, a potential, um, a lot of a different kind of possible um, definitions around sustainable business models. And it's interesting if you start looking at sustainable business models, let's say the first kind of initiatives around business models towards sustainability or sustainable business models, they were already kind of coined like, you know, 10, 15 years ago. But I think over the last two, three years, what we have seen is that the, the amount of publications uh, on this particular kind of field has increased significantly. So we see that there's when it comes to sustainable business model and trying to advocate the necessity to have more sustainability connected to business models uh, as well, is actually increasing significantly in, the, in, in academia. Um, not only, of course, in academia, but also, let's say, in the business world, in, in society in, in general uh, as such. But, uh, but still, one of the latest kind of research that has been done, uh, it still advocates, there's still a lack of understanding of, let's say, how we actually implement these sustainable business models. Uh, how do you actually go about trying to get them to work? Um, so Stops and uh, Cockling 2008, which is one of the, the more earlier ones, they talk about sustainable business model as using both systems and firm level perspective. And I think that's an important uh, aspect to take into consideration when we talk about sustainable business models. It's not only from a firm level perspective. As a firm, you need to take a much more larger kind of uh, uh, Kind of larger kind of group of stakeholders into consideration. This is also very clearly that comes back in the other definitions from Ludwig and Freund and uh, Geisdorfer, where they actually really talk about company and society or this multi-stakeholder perspective. So uh, as an organization, as a, as a firm, as a startup company, you need to look beyond, let's say, kind of like your your own tier, your first tier, or maybe or potentially your, your second or your third tier. So you really need to kind of like extend, let's say, your perspective on, let's say, uh, how and to what extent can our business model or sustainable business model make a contribution. And it's about bringing together, let's say, both 
the economic part, as well as the triple bottom line uh, in terms of the social and the environmental part. And really trying to bring these three kind of together in a way that is viable, that is feasible, and that there is a kind of great impact uh, when it comes to uh, oh, the models as such. Not only a financial impact, but also a societal kind of impact. So, and this is also something that Geisdorf is really kind of like uh, pushing forward in his article around, and they have done a kind of like a literature review on, let's say, uh, oh, business model, business model innovation, but also towards kind of sustainability. So it's both the creation of this monetary in terms of revenues, in terms of profits, um, which of course is important for the existence and the livelihood of organizations, but also this non-monetary value in terms of how can we actually support towards society? How can we make a positive impact towards the social community and, and so forth? Um, and how can we reach out to this broader kind of range of state kind of stakeholders? And I really like this particular last part of, let's say, Kaisdorfer, uh, where there's actually a long-term perspective in there. So not something as kind of like a one-off, because we all know these terms about, well, are we doing good because we want to look good, or do we really do good because we want to mean good? This whole greenwashing uh, kind of perspective. And I think that's an important part of, uh, that Kaisdorfer, in their definition around sustainable business models, are adding as well. So we're in this for the long term. We really mean serious. So it's not something where the public might say, well, are they doing it because they really mean good or are they just doing it because it kind of like looks good so that it can actually be used as kind of like reporting um, and it can actually end up in their uh, sustainability report at the end of the year. So um, so this long-term perspective, I think it's, it's a very important uh, part of let's say sustainable business models as well. So, Another thing that I just wanted to kind of show to you is a research that has been done. It kind of like started with Bokken et al. in 2014. Uh, and what they found is basically eight generic business model strategies. The research was uh, copied by Ritala uh, et al. in 2018. And they looked at more at the top 500 kind of like large kind of organizations. And basically, they confirmed what uh, Bokken et al. found as well. Uh, but they added the a ninth element. And what these kind of like, um, what this, these two researchers actually kind of like have shown is that when you look at from a company perspective, and this is both for let's say uh, small to medium sized enterprises as well as for larger kind of organizations. So why do they actually engage in sustainable business models? What is their uh, well? What is their rationale of actually doing so? What causes them to kind of like invest in? sustainability and, and to kind of think about uh, uh, sustainable business models as such. Um, and what Bokken has also, they kind of talk about these uh, archetypes. Um, and there's different kind of rationals, different kind of strategic intents that organizations can have when they actually would like to work with more sustainable business models. So the first part is when, it comes, when we talk about maximizing material and energy efficiency. So how can we use less energy? Uh, how can we use less material or more environmental uh, friendly materials um, in the way we develop our products, in the way we develop our, our, our services? So really to kind of critically reflect upon the material and energy usage uh, as such. Um, the, the second archetype that they talked about in their research is closing these resource loops. So how can we close, and this is very much connected to, for example, circular, uh, circular economy, uh, a lot of these cradle to crave kind of initiatives that we see. Um, and it's, it's more and more uh, being developed and more and more organizations are using that, which is, which is great. Uh, but it's very much aimed at how to kind of close the, uh, the loops of reuse, remanufacturing, recycling um, as such. Uh, so we see more organizations taking responsibility for their products, their products after use, and how can they actually kind of take it back? Um, and how can we use it in a different kind of, different kind of way? Um, another archetype or another strategy towards sustainable business models is what we call substitute renewables and natural kind of processes. How can we use renewable and natural kind of uh, processes, for example, uh, for uh, to be replaced by 
you know, the conventional ways. So solar energy, for example, or heating, uh, this is how, you know, natural processes can actually be substitute, uh, substitute conventional uh, ways of heating. So how do we actually use natural processes, um, natural materials in a, in a different kind of way uh, to kind of substitute, to have it more efficient, to have it more effective, to have a better kind of impact uh, for, for the business and to have a great impact on the society and the environment as such. Um, then we move into the social parts uh, as part of this triple helix kind of models towards kind of uh, sustainable value. Uh, we see that more and more organizations are actually delivering functionality rather than ownership. Uh, this is not only in sustainable business model, this is kind of like a trend that we see uh, in business models uh, as such as well. So, and it goes back to the, the classical saying from Peter Drucker, uh, a customer doesn't buy a product, it only buys a utility. You need to buy a product because the, the product does something for you. So if you can take actually the ownership away from, uh, let's say, uh, from an individual or from a customer, uh, and then still be able to provide functionality, uh, that is uh, something where um, well, it could be beneficial for, for the customer as such, but it can also be better beneficial for, uh, uh, for the social system. So that ownership is not really kind of like part of that. Uh, and again, it takes more of kind of like, you know, perspective of companies taking responsibility for what's happening towards their, with their products. Adopt a stewardship role. So for example, taking back, this is very often what we see, for example, when we talked about closing re resource loops, organizations taking a very active, very promotional kind of driven uh, stewardship role. Like if you use our materials, if you use our kind of product, you can actually uh, give it back to us. We will take care of that uh, and really be kind of like more of kind of like an advocate towards sustainability as such. Um, and trying to really push on, let's say, the importance of sustainability and thinking about not just to kind of throw away products, but actually trying to bring it back. Um, another part is what we call encourage sufficiency. Um, and again, a little bit connected to the stewardship role. This is where about companies take a very active and a leading role in providing information. Uh, this is very active in terms of providing information about how much natural resources it will cost to produce a certain product or what they have done in order to kind of like increase the uh, efficiency of, let's say, natural resources. So this is also then about, you know, how can we encourage uh, sufficiency? Uh, the other, in terms of more kind of like the economic uh, particular kind of part is um, the repurpose, repurpose for society and the environment uh, as such. So this is aimed at utilizing uh, resources um, of an organization. For example, staying aligned with, you know, a battery loop. This might be a way to kind of like to repurpose, you know, products, re uh, knowledge products to kind of like not to throw away battery packs, but just to kind of like reuse it for a different kind of uh, uh, way. Um, this inclusive value creation is what we see from primarily has been identified by Ritala as a way for, let's say, uh, primarily larger kind of organizations of how to interact with a larger set of uh, stakeholders uh, and how this particular kind of company uh, can actually create. It's almost connected to this open innovation kind of paradigm of how to bring different kind of stakeholders in the sustainability work that you do and trying to piggyback on different kinds of ideas that might be out there uh, as such. Um, and another part is what we call this development sustainable scale up solutions. So how can we develop a near different ideas, but also can we scale it to different kinds of industries and, and different kinds of marketplaces as such. So we see that organizations are applying a different kind of strategies towards sustainable business models um, uh, as such. And just a, a quick example, uh, just more for your, for your own. Uh, this is for, for example, from Michelin. Uh, Michelin used to, and it's still of course is, you know, selling their, their tires. Um, it's very, very much about trying to maximize the, 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 the total sales volume, trying to sell as many tires as possible towards different kind of uh, customers, either individual customers or uh, or businesses as such. And that was normally this one-off kind of transaction. So you bought a tire and that was kind of like your relationship. 
the waste of the tiles was something that has been done and been taken care of by other kind of organizations. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, Michelin changed this particular kind of model, especially towards their more industri industrial uh, consumers and the larger kind of organizations, where they really kind of focused on an energy efficiency of tires as such. So they put different kind of um, uh, sensors in the tires as such, and they came up with different kind of service on how to uh, use tires in a more energy efficient kind of way so that at least for the customer perspective, they could use the tires longer uh, over a longer period of lifetime. Um, and this was not by done by a particular kind of one sale, but the, the customers for, let's say, or more uh, the businesses that were buying Michelin tires, they were paying kind of like a monthly fee for this to get this in kind of information um, about energy efficiency, about tire efficiency and so forth. Um, and they were paying a monthly uh, fee. Uh, when the tires were breaking down, um, Michelin also came in and, and made sure that the, the tires were placed, replaced on a, in, a, on a, in a timely manner. They were taking part of this kind of like, uh, responsibility for the reusage, remanufacturing of the tires uh, as such and took their particular kind of role. So in that way, they not only addressed you know, specific needs from their customers, but they also had a, a, a larger kind of uh, stakeholders to kind of like take. That is, the overall society, that's the, the environment as such, and, and that particular way addressing to the sustainabilities uh, of the goals that has been set by the UN. So if you're familiar with the business model canvas, uh, you already can see that when it comes to sustainability in business models, what we normally see is that we will add two additional fields to uh, the business model canvas as such. Uh, one more towards beneficiaries, so not looking at the direct customers, but also who are the customers of the customers, who are the beneficiaries to kind of like increase this kind of multiple stakeholder perspective. And then to kind of talk about different kind of goals, not in terms of uh, revenues and profits, but more to talk about sustainability uh, goals as such. But I mean, as I said, um, um, even though we see a lot of fantastic initiatives, uh, and even though we see a lot of kind of like movement and uh, in terms of sustainability, which I very much applaud, which is which is great, we also know that when it comes to innovation, when it comes to business model, and we, when it comes to sustainable ideas within in, inside an organization, it doesn't always uh, work. It, it sometimes it actually fails, and. To a certain extent, and again, this is a little bit of a provocative, we should be ha happy that certain things are failing. Because on one hand, we know success is a lousy learner. Uh, it's a great motivator, but it's a lousy learner. So sometimes we actually do fail with these kind of things. So we can't push every single idea to, in terms of a commercial kind of product where we address both economic value, societal value, and environmental value. But the word fail is basically an abbreviation. The word fail has a meaning, and, and uh, the word fail basically means first attempt in learning. So, and I think this is a very important thing that we should keep in our mind when we actually talk about uh, uh, failures. So, it's not about blaming, it's not about shame, it's not about negative consequences. I think organizations should see failures more as an opportunity to really kind of like learn from it. So why did it not work out? What did we miss? With whom should we have uh, reached out? How can we repackage um, this particular kind of business model, this kind of this, uh, this particular kind of idea in a different way? Um, and I think that is when I look at many kind of organizations, this is not really kind of like happening. Normally what we try to do is when somebody feels we're trying to sweep it under the carpet. I think when it comes to sustainability, uh, we should actually make it hurt. We should actually actually talk about it. So why did it not work out? We did it for the best kind of intentions. We did all our homework, but it still failed. Why is that actually the case? Um, because only in this way, if we actually start learning from our failures, we really can make a difference. And we, of course, we already make a difference, but I think the, the, the difference that we can make can actually be increased significantly by actually focusing on, let's say, trying to learn from our failures. So what I hope that you know, many start organizations start to do when they work with innovation or when they work with business modeling or when they work with sustainability is that they actually start thinking about the different kinds of projects. So what is the type of learning that we wanna get from this project? What is that we wanna know? 
And it's not only for the firm as such, but especially when we talk about sustainability, we need to take this multiple uh, stakeholder uh, into consideration. So what is it that we learn, learn when it comes to environment? What is it that we want to learn when it comes to society? How can we address these aspects a little bit more specifically? So I think this is an important part. Uh, and even though that the whole title of this particular uh, seminar was why do they actually fail? Why do sustainable, uh, sustainable uh, business model actually fail? It's really about how can we actually learn from sustainable business models that have not yet made it to, uh, to the marketplace, that have not been implemented as such. So um, what I think, and this is a little bit based upon what I've seen from both innovation management, what I've seen from, let's say, uh, uh, business modeling um, and what I see in, let's say, uh, sustainability or sustainable business models. I think that when it comes to sustainable business models, and uh, there's a few challenges. And I said, this is just my, uh, my ideas around it. And what I really hope is that we can have a discussion afterwards, but also that we can maybe hopefully have a discussion after this particular kind of session, trying to understand what are the challenges of, let's say, organizations when they work and try to work with sustainable business models. So the first part that I wanna talk about is what we call the acceptance problems. Uh, so um, this is sometimes what we refer back into, let's say, uh, when we talk about innovation as the messenger problem. Um, and what we see when it comes to innovation, when it comes to business models, but also when we come to, uh, to talk about, let's say, um, uh, sustainability is that we have a very clear kind of answer that we normally see. So if you come up with a new idea towards innovation, sustainability, sustainability or sustainable business models, it's very often that you get a reaction like, oh, that's a great idea. But there's always a but when it is kind of things. This is happening inside an organization where organizations have a difficult time of actually accepting new kind of ideas. So why should we do this? You know, we're doing good. Uh, why should we uh, fish in the same pond? How can we actually prove that there is a, you know, for us as a business also an economic viable thing to, uh, to do? So there's still a very much kind of like, you know, what we call a, a, an immune system uh, as such, where these sustainable ideas towards business modeling are not always directly accepted. So you need to be able to kind of like sell. It's not a direct acceptance that you get. You need to be able to convince, you need to be able to argue for that inside an organization. I think that's to a large extent also externally that we see where um, there might be uh, a higher level of scrutiny when it comes to the public, when an organization is pushing out a sustainable business model. So why do they do this? Are they doing that because they wanna look good or are, are they actually doing something good? So there is a somewhat still a kind of like the, uh, the scrutiny. So and I think this has a lot to do with, you know, for example, the mindset uh, inside an organization. Um, so this is what we call the acceptance problems. It's a great idea, but there's always, there's always a but. And I, I, I really believe that this should really turn into a discussion rather than saying like, it's a great idea, but, but more turn it into a discussion around, that's a great idea and, I think if you have that kind of discussion inside an organization, you will actually have the right kind of preconditions around how to make sustainability and how to work with sustainability more specifically. The other thing that I uh, want to bring up as a challenge for why sustainable business models are, are failing um, is what we call the networking problem. Organizations, not only inside in order to be able to deal with the immune system, but also outside, they need to network with multiple stakeholders. And it's not only the stakeholders that they know uh, that they work with today, but they need to cast the web much, much further than that. Um, so this is what we call the networking problem. So how do you actually have this, what, uh, what we've seen from the previous definitions around sustainable business models, how can you actually create new kind of networks? How can you interact with new kind of networks? How do you bring, let's say, uh, actors, stakeholders um, in the discussions around sustainable business models that you normally would not talk to. So it's, I think it's important that you know, organizations are networking with other kind of uh, actors than what they're currently doing uh, as such, which is difficult, which is a challenge in, in itself. 
but in order to really to understand the impact and the benefits that sustainable business models have, I think it's an, a very important part to take this overall kind of perspective around uh, sustainable business models. The other part that I want to kind of focus on is what we call the lamppost problem. This is the lamppost problem of innovation, but I think it's also very much true for sustainable business models. Um, we're approaching the end, so but I'll tell you a little bit of kind of like a, a joke uh, before we kind of like move into what I think companies should be doing more of. Uh, so the lamppost problem of, uh, for innovation and for sustainable business models goes a little bit like this. Um, as I said, I'm not the best joke teller, but I hope that you can bear with me. Um, I was this weekend, I, I, I love football. So I was actually in a bar uh, with some of my friends watching a, a match. And uh, at a certain moment in time, I saw it on my watch. It was already kind of like 11 o'clock. And I said to, uh, to my friends, so really, really sorry, but I have to go. You know, I have two kids. So they're, they're waking up uh, six o'clock in the morning. And I want to spend some quality time with them on a Sunday uh, uh, morning and so Sunday afternoon. So I said goodbye to my friends. And when I was kind of like uh, walking down the street back home, I saw this guy, he was hanging on to a lamppost. And, you know, you could see that he was, he was drunk, but he was constantly doing like this. It's almost like he was kind of like looking for something. And I asked him like, okay, uh, can I help you? Uh, because I thought, well, I would better help him out and to see, you know, uh, if, if I can help him finding what he, what he was looking for. And he was like, yeah, 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 I lost me keys. I lost me keys. All right, you lost your keys. You know what? I can help you. So I started looking down on the floor for some time. And after you know, 10 seconds, it was obvious the keys were not there. So I raised myself up again and asked the, the, the guy uh, who's still hanging on to the lamppost. He said, like, I'm really, really sorry, but I can't find your keys. Uh, so so where, where did you see the keys for the last time? And he did something like that. Yeah, over, over there. But if they're over there, why are you looking here? And he says, here's more light. Um, and this is a very typical problem when it comes to innovation, but I think it's also a very typical problem when it comes to sustainable business models. We're trying to look into the places that we know that we have oh, information about, but are we really trying to solve the real problem? Are we really looking beyond the primary focus of the, of the company? Are we really kind of like taking this multiple stakeholder perspective into, uh, into consideration? Are we really thinking about um, uh, reaching out uh, into different kinds of networks and not only to look at the places that we know? So I think that the lamppost problem is very particularly true for sustainable business models as well. So, but just to leave you with a little bit of a kind of like a positive note, um, I think a very important thing, what I would like to focus on, what I have been focusing on when it comes to innovations is how can we actually lag demise? Because when we talk about new ideas, sustainable business and models, we need to know that they need to be sold. They need to be sold to the organization. They need to be sold to the marketplace. They need to be sold to society. And when it comes to new ideas, it's very difficult to use typical KPIs that we use. For that matter, financial KPIs, but also some of our social uh, KPIs, uh, our social return on investment calculations that we have uh, nowadays. So we really need to think more about how can we actually lag the months, going back to the three challenges that I've uh, showed to you before. How can we actually convince others that, you know, this is actually a good way of doing this? So what I know and what I've seen when it comes to uh, innovation, uh, social, uh, social sustainable business models, but also uh, social innovation, social entrepreneurship, really think about, let's say, not only the formal structure of an organization, the formal organization of the organization, but also think about the informal networks. Who can you kind of talk to? Who can you relate to? So thinking about trying to build up a fan club, uh, raising the, the communication, raising the awareness. That's something that you can do internally, but it's also something that you can do externally. For that, you need to be connected to different kinds of networks. For that, you need to search beyond the lamppost uh, as such. And in that way, you can go actually go beyond, let's say, uh, uh, the acceptance uh, uh, challenge. And sometimes you need to, ch uh, to shift focus. Sometimes you need to kind of get another kind of perspective into, the, into consideration. Um, and sometimes you have to jump out and try to do something very, very different. Um, and find another place where this is accepted. 
So with that said, I, I know that uh, it's now quarter two and I promised Marie to collect stuff. Um, I wanna thank you for your attention. As I said, it's a slightly provocative kind of title. I'm very much aware of this, but what I really wanted to do there is kind of show you today some of the things that I found with regard to innovation, business modeling and sustainable business models. And to really kind of trying to learn from why does the sustainable business models not always work? What are the issues that our companies are actually facing? And I'm hoping also to be able to reach out to you. So if you're interested in this topic, if you have, let's say, an interest in this, or you, if you want to like continue discussion together with me, feel free to, to reach out um, uh, to me. Here's my contact details, here's my email address. Uh, so uh, feel free to um, contact me whenever you want so that we can actually continue discussion, trying to learn from our failures, and in that way, make even a bigger impact on, let's say, uh, on sustainability. So thank you very much for today. Uh, thank you, Rick, uh, for a very interesting presentation. Uh, and we will move forward directly to questions. There are lots of questions in the chat. Uh, and uh, we have invited a colleague to Rick, senior lecturer Erik Gustafsson, to help us moderate the questions. So hello, Erik, are you there? I am here, and I hope that you can both hear and see me uh, now. There are a lot of questions coming in, so I will do my best to cover some of them um, to the best of my ability. Uh, luckily for all of you, of course, as Rick has said, if you do have more questions uh, afterwards, uh, do let him know and he might be able to, to answer them then. But I will try to condense this down into a couple of sort of main topics, I think, that we that we can talk about. And I would want to actually start off with a bit of a question around um, definitions, Rick. So we've been talking about, uh, or you, I should say, I have definitely not been talking, I've been listening, but about words like sustainability, the difficulty of the complexity of terminology like sustainability. Mm. How about the term business model? What is a business model? And why is it that we need to think about business models when we talk about sustainability? Mm. Absolutely. No, I think it's, it's a good question. I think, you know, um, of course, there's a lot of academic debate around, let's say, um, different kind of definitions around sustainability and business models as, as such. I would argue that the same discussions are very important for any kind of type of organization to have a clear understanding. What does sustainability mean for us as an organization? How do we relate to, um, uh, to sustainability as well as how do we actually think about uh, business modeling as such? So, but um, I'll try to get back to that in a, in a, uh, in a short while. Um, let's say for myself, a very simple, but a very powerful definition is the one from Alexander Osterwalder uh, from the book on, let's say, business model generation. And what he basically, or how he actually basically defines a business model is the rationale of an organization on how to create, deliver, and, and capture value. Um, so, the basic notion around business modeling is about, well, you can have a product, for example, you can, you know, you can have a pen, uh, but you can, you know, of course, you can sell the pen to somebody uh, as a one-off, but you can also say, well, maybe like what, what Michelin does, but also what Rolls-Royce is doing with Power by the Hour, which is a very classical, famous success story about business model changes, is, well, what if we kind of like, you know, give the pen away, to, away for free? How can we actually capture value then? And how can we create value? Uh, so it's really kind of like thinking about and, and, and challenging the way organizations are creating, delivering and, and capturing value. Um, so why I think this is also not only purely an academic kind of discussion, uh, but also an important discussion for businesses is, um, I mean, I, I teach some now and then in innovation management. And uh, normally when I asked uh, different participants in, in our courses, what does innovation mean to you? I probably get 10, 15 different kind of answers. Um, and that's interesting because if as an organization, we can't align the way we think about innovations, we basically are running in different kinds of directions. We're basically taking different kinds of perspectives. So as an organization, the discussions around how do we define sustainability? How do we define business modeling? But also how do we define innovations? Isn't important because it kind of like sets the direction. Um, and I think when it comes to sustainable business models, some kind of sense of the sense of direction that we need to take or need to have as an organization is a very important part. 
um, because otherwise we know that people are running in different directions. They will do different kinds of things. Um, and you create kind of like this cowboy, cowboy culture in, in, in an organization. And uh, we all know about Enron, um, which has basically had a, a cowboy culture and it did not really went, uh, went too well. So this, the, the, having a clear definition of these, you know, interesting terms inside an organization is also, and I think it's also important, especially when it comes to, you know, dealing with the acceptance uh, challenge, for example, that organizations are clear, well, this is our stance. This is the way we want to work with sustainability. This is the way we want to work with business modeling. This is the way we want to work with innovations um, as a way to kind of like legitimize also the initiatives that they do. So, um, so I think it's a very important discussion that's, uh, that needs to happen inside an organization or in general, I, I would say. It's not only purely an academic kind of discussions um, in, in that way, yeah. So I hope that answered the question. I, I, I definitely think so. And I think it addresses something that is really important, which also um, is highlighted in, in, in some of the comments in uh, the chat, which of course has got to do with definitions. Yeah. As you very uh, much say, that we have to bear in mind that different people will define uh, concepts in different ways. And so when we interpret the results that we also need to bear this in mind. Um, a question that is, is linked in a sense though, is that when you were talking about business models and you talked about you know, previous research that has been done on say um, sustainable uh, business models, and you talked about the research by uh, Eritala um, and, and so on and the different um, dimensions or, or different categories that they put out in terms of environmental, social and economic business models and strategies for that. Yeah. And essentially the way that this research comes across is as though these are separate funnels. But we also have questions about, okay, but how do we then create links in between these? How do we go about in working with business models that perhaps address both um, environmental aspects and economic sustainability, for example, or for that matter, all three. So what is your idea on that? Yeah, no, I, th I think it's a really good question. So I'll just go back and share my screen. So I, then I can go back to this particular slide. So I think it makes it a little bit easier for everyone to go into the uh, my answer. So this is what, what you're kind of like re referring to. And um, even though that's, you know, the way this particular model is kind of shown uh, is as nine, you know, uh, archetypes what they basically call it or business sustainable business model strategies mm -hmm. i would really argue and that's also part of the uh, the discussion that's you know it's in the paper they're not really kind of mutual exclusive they can actually build upon each other um if you kind of like play them um in, in a good way mm -hmm. so because when we talk about sustainable business models it's not only purely about the economic it's not only purely about the social it's not only purely about environmental mm -hmm. it's about the combination uh, combination of different kind of aspects so, for example, if you would think about how can we substitute with renewable energy or how can we um, create better kind of energy efficiency or material efficiency, for example, it can also be connected with, you know, a stewardship role that you actually um, are active part of the community of kind of like taking back and, and working with that. It can also be connected to the strategy around encourage sufficiency, where you actually provide a lot of information. Uh, and then again, it could also be connected to inclusive value creation, for example, where you invite different kind of uh, stakeholders into kind of discussion. So um, I think it's an excellent question. And I really would, uh, let's say, argue that these uh, different kind of strategies are not, not mutually exclusive. They actually work together. Mm -hmm. But I think as an organization or as a company or as, you know, as a business or anybody who's kind of like interested in sustainable business model strategies, uh, you have to, you know, you have to make a certain choice. Um, so I think if you want to start with business model innovation and business model, sustainable business model strategies, mm -hmm. select one of those strategies in, in there and, and use kind of like more of kind of like an interest kind of approach towards developing this different, different kind of uh, um, uh, your, your idea around sustainability. Uh, so, for example, maximize material energy efficiency, encourage sufficiency and be inclusive around this particular one, because that is kind of like what you can actually use. That's where you can actually make an impact. Uh, it's definitely not part of my recommendations to work with all different nine strategies at the same time, because, again, this goes back to is how does, you know, the public look upon us? How do we want to be known? What is it that we would like to work with? Um, 
And also, how do we actually measure our impact? Because I think that's, it's not something that we really kind of like discussed uh, very in-depthly, but I think that's an other kind of like important part is how do we then actually measure our impact that we have uh, with the strategies as such? Mm -hmm. um, and does it actually make, make sense environmentally, socially, and ec economically to, to, to continue with this particular kind of part? So these are definitely not mutually exclusive. They actually work hand in hand, but you have to make a choice um, and don't try to do that all at the same time. Because I think the, the important thing around sustainable business model is a little bit like the same with what we see in product innovations. We, we go out, we test our products. Uh, we go back, we learn, we, we update, we, uh, we redesign, and then we try it out again. So we go through these iterative kind of cycles. This is very important for business models and sustainable business models as well, that we go through these iterative kind of cycles of development. So make a choice, try it, test it, go back, trying to learn from it. Sometimes it will succeed, excellent. Sometimes it actually might fail. How can we actually learn from it? And again, this goes back to this first attempt in learning what FIELD actually stands for. I think when you have these kind of initiatives, really make sure that you're very clear about what is it that I really wanna learn. Even if I don't succeed, what is the learning that I would like to kind of like reap uh, as part of the benefits there? Very good and, and elaborate answer, I feel. And, and also in many ways, of course, also an answer that spurs even more questions, but I think we can hopefully find a good way to tie this together. So now we've talked about, uh, as you say, sort of links to how innovation in general works or for that matter, businesses work in general. And, um, you have chosen a topic or, or a title for this presentation, which is, of course, then why sustainable business models fail. And at the same time, we, of course, also know that other types of businesses fail, right? Other types of business models fail. Quite frankly, most businesses and business models fail. So is there a uniqueness, you would say, to the failure of uh, sustainable business models? And is it even the case that they fail even more? And why would that, in that case, be uh, the case? Mm -hmm. I think I think that's an excellent uh, question, and uh, I think the biggest uniqueness of sustainable business models is that it's more under the scrutiny of the public. Mm -hmm. For example, we see very similar kind of uh, reasons why, for example, innovative ideas fail, uh, why business models in general fail, why digital business models fail. But I mean, they have a very different kind of rational. It's more in terms of the economic part. How can we turn this into a valuable business model for us as an organization? How can we actually um, be profitable? I think when we talk about sustainable business model, the uniqueness of that is, you know, as an organization, since you're kind of like reaching out to a larger kind of degree of stakeholders, you're much more under the scrutiny of the public. So all of a sudden, you're not only kind of like thinking about the economic part of it, you also have to think about the social part, you have to think about the environmental part. So it's not only the customers, but it's the beneficiaries that you kind of talk about. So the potential um, repercussions of, let's say, um, let's say uh, business model failures might actually be much larger than, for example, with purely looking at it from an uh, uh, economic value kind of perspective. Of course, then also the, the potential benefits with sustainable business models uh, is actually much higher in that particular kind of way. So it's a little bit of a kind of like a balancing act, but I think the, the, the main decide, the decisive kind of like, you know, difference uh, here is that when it comes to the sustainable business model, when it comes to social innovations, the public scrutiny, the accountability that you have to take as an organization for the initiatives that you have is, an imp uh, is one of the, the biggest kind of differences. And it's something that, that organizations really need to kind of think about and they really need to think through uh, about, again, uh, what are the implications of this? Um, and how do we, for example, communicate this also in a good way, not only to our customers, but also to the beneficiaries or the beneficiaries of the beneficiaries to society in, as, as a whole. I think that's a great answer and unfortunately I see and, and here she uh, appears right on time because I realized that it's now only one minute to one so I will leave the word to Marie I think and hope that you feel that you got some answers but as you see there's a lot of questions that want to be answered and, and hopefully this for some some really interesting discussions for the future. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you so much, uh, first of all, Rick, for uh, teaching us about the challenge with uh, sustainable business models. Uh, and thank you, Eric, for the discussion and moderating the questions. I believe we have uh, quite a few questions that didn't have, we didn't have time to answer now. We will take care of them in one way or another uh, to get your feedback on them. Um, but now, uh, and I also want to thank you, of course, all attendees has been with us today that you have been really a lot of people uh, connecting to us. Um, and uh, on behalf of the School of Business, Economics and Law at the University of Gothenburg, I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and we hope to meet you again next year. Thanks for today. Bye bye. <laughs>